Histology is the study of tissue. Tissues are groups of cells that are similar in structure and similar in function. These cells work together to perform a specific function. There are four major tissue types, epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. Epithelial tissue is found covering surfaces and lining tubes in the body. It lines all of the body cavities that have natural openings to the outside. There are several functions for epithelial tissue. Because it covers and lines, it protects whatever is underneath it. It may be involved in absorbing material from the outside of the body to the inside. Epithelial tissues are involved in excreting products we no longer want or in forming substances that we need to secrete. Epithelial tissues can act as filters and they also compose glands and many of our sensory receptors. We can classify epithelial cells in two ways. One is the number of layers. A simple epithelium has a single layer of cells. A stratified epithelium has more than one layer of cells. We also have the classification of pseudostratified. Pseudostratified epithelium is only one layer of cells, but because of the arrangement of the nuclei, it looks like there are more than one layer. The other classification is based on cellular shape. Squamous cells are irregular in shape and somewhat flattened. Cuboidal cells are box-like, and columnar cells have a rectangular shape. Here you see some simple squamous epithelium. This is viewed from the top. You see the nucleus and the cell membranes, and you see how tightly packed this single layer of cells is. When you have a sunburn and a layer of skin peels off, if you could look at that layer under the microscope, this is what it would look like. Over here we have another simple squamous epithelium. It's a single layer of cells, and it's much harder to see this because we're slicing through them. So think about having a fried egg, and you're slicing through that fried egg. Here we've sliced through, so we've gotten the yolk or the nucleus, and here's some of the white of the egg or the cytoplasm of the cell. Here we have some simple cuboidal epithelium. The cells are more box-like. There's only a single layer, and you can see how these cells are lining a tube, these cells are lining a tube, and these cells were covering a surface. Here's another example of a simple squamous epithelium lining a tube. And again, you see that kind of fried egg thing where we've got the nucleus and the cytoplasm. And then here we see some simple cuboidal, those box-like cells, a single layer, and again, they're lining a tube. Simple columnar cells will have that rectangular shape to them. Notice it's really easy to see that this is a single layer because all the nuclei are all lined up in a row, so it's easy to see this is a single layer of cells. This is a pseudostratified columnar. The nuclei are kind of jumbled up, and it looks like there might be more than one layer. But if you could trace every single cell all the way down to the bottom, you would see that it's only one cell layer thick. Instead of the cells being nice and regular boxes, these cells are a little bit strange in shape, broad at the top and skinny at the bottom, or sometimes skinny at the top and broad at the bottom. And then this is a stratified squamous epithelium. The cells are flattened and there are several layers. So it's stratified and it's squamous. The second kind of tissue is connective tissue. This is the most abundant tissue in the body because it's found absolutely everywhere. Here, the cells are separated by a non-living matrix. In epithelial tissue, the cells were all tightly packed together. Here, the cells have material between them that's called matrix. Connective tissue functions to bind materials in the body together, support structures in the body, it can act as an insulator, can help transport materials in the body, and it can help store material in the body. The matrix has two major features in its composition. The ground substance is a group of glycoproteins, sugar proteins. This helps determine the nature of the tissue. Is the tissue spongy? Is it gelatinous? Is it very firm? The other part of the matrix are the fibers. We have three fiber types. Collagen are nice, tough, flexible fibers. Elastic fibers are stretchy. And reticular fibers are very fine, delicate fibers. They're very similar to collagen in that they're flexible, but they're much thinner than collagen. Between the ground substance and the fibers, we get everything from bone, which is very, very hard, to blood, which is a liquid. All of those are connective tissues. 
One of the most common tissues in the body is areolar tissue. Here you see the cells. They're not particularly touching each other. These little fine reticular fibers here, these are fine collagen fibers. And here the matrix is the glycoprotein is fairly liquid. Areolar tissue is sort of like post-it note stuff. It helps hold stuff together. In reticular tissue, we have these much heavier collagen-like fibers, and they form a network that supports other cells. We find reticular connective tissue making up organs like the liver and the spleen. And then this is adipose tissue. Doesn't look like too much. It sort of looks like a fine pink net, but that's because the cells are full of fat. That's what adipose tissue is. So this is a storage tissue. So we have an example of a tissue that holds stuff together, one that supports other cells, and this one stores. Hyaline cartilage is also a connective tissue. Here you can see the cells are separated from each other where we have cells close together in the same space. These are cells that are undergoing mitosis and they haven't completely separated here. The glycoprotein here is kind of firm. It's sort of gelatinous and the fibers are very fine collagen fibers. This makes for a tough, very flexible material. This is found on the ends of your bones, for example. Bone is a connective tissue. Here we have the cells and this little spider web looking thing and the matrix is glycoproteins that have calcium salts deposited in them. So this is a very hard tissue. And then blood is another connective tissue. Cells are separated from each other, but here the glycoproteins don't have fibers all the time. The fibers are soluble, so this is a fluid kind of tissue. It's easy to think that tissues are supposed to be like a Kleenex, one flat layer of cells, but tissues can be all kinds of things. They can be liquids, they can be solids. The fibers in blood only become insoluble when blood needs to clot. The third type of tissue is the muscle tissue. Muscle tissue contracts, it functions in movement. We classify muscle tissue based on its location. Skeletal muscle is attached to bones. When it contracts, it's going to move the body. Cardiac muscle is found in the walls of the heart. When it contracts, it pumps blood through the heart. And smooth muscle is found in the walls of hollow organs. This is going to move substances through those tubes in the body. Skeletal muscle has these long cylindrical cells that have these little stripes in it. Because we control consciously the movement of these muscles, it, it's called voluntary muscle, and the little stripes make it striated muscle. Cardiac muscle has branching cells. Now it's striated, you still see the little stripes in there, and it's held together by special structures called intercalated discs. These extra heavy stripes are the intercalated discs. We can't control the contraction of the heart muscle, so we say it's involuntary, but because it has the stripes, we say it's striated. And then smooth muscle fibers are kind of spindle-shaped. They tend to get together and make sheets of muscle. It's called smooth because there are none of those little striations. And because we do not control when this contracts, it's called involuntary muscle. And the fourth type of tissue is nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is found in the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves, and it functions in controlling the body. Neurons are the cells that make up nervous tissue. They tend to have these long processes that allow them to connect with other cells in the body. They communicate using these long processes.